Park. Civilizations get going only a few thousand years ago. We're just one tiny part of life's three and a half billion year journey through time. When we stop to think about the vastness of time and life's journey through it, it makes us feel so insignificant. But it's also amazing that we're here at all, able to think about our place in time. And to realize that one day, humanity and all our glories will be gone. Time erodes everything too. 99.9% of all species that have ever lived on the Earth are now extinct. And one day we too may be erased. Our new perspective on the vastness of Earth's history teaches us that life is very transient. When and how we may meet our end, nobody knows. But evolution teaches us that one day the human race too will die out. So, how far might humanity stretch into the future? It's impossible to tell for sure, but that doesn't stop us from imagining. One day, 7,000 years from now, an explorer stumbles into a cave deep inside a mountain in Nevada. he might find something extraordinary. It's a clock unlike any ever built, designed to run for 10,000 years. I imagine all the time an archaeologist discovering it thousands of years from now. Its creator, Danny Hellis, is an inventor. To conceive this clock, he had to ponder a future beyond our civilization. I've come to realize there's no way I can possibly plan for what people are going to be like 10,000 years from now. Will I relate to them? Will they look like me? Will they be my descendants? Or they, will they be from some other part of the Earth or some other planet? Or it starts raising a whole bunch of questions that you don't normally think about. The mechanics of the clock will be on display so that any people of the future can see exactly how it works. Danny's used the natural cycles of the planets as a universal language of time. He's reaching across time to speak to any civilization that might follow us. What I want to do is say to the people of the future, well, we did see, even when we were going through that crazy thing that happened around the year 2000, the few centuries around it, even then we realized we were part of something larger that lasted a longer time. Should an explorer of the future find Danny's creation, his 10,000-year clock will respond. If you showed up 5,000 years from now, this is what they would play. But if you came the next day, then they would play this. So you see, each day is almost exactly the same as the one before, but each day is absolutely unique. So if you visited and you heard the bells, you heard something different than anybody else ever heard before or anybody else will ever hear again. And time's kind of like that. But even Danny's clock of 10,000 years is nothing in Earth's time scale. So what is our ultimate future? When will our Earth's time be over? 
The answer depends on an understanding not of life or the earth, but of our sun. I'm in Arizona, on top of the biggest solar telescope in the world. It projects the largest live image of our sun that I'm ever likely to see. I have never seen the sun like this before in its full glory. This is fantastic. The clarity, the size. And over here, you can see a sunspot representing a cooler storm on the surface of the sun. This is truly magnificent. Our source of light and heat, the sun powers our planet. Without it, life couldn't exist. But our sun will not be around forever. And when the sun dies, the Earth will die too. In the 1930s, scientists speculated that the sun was a gigantic nuclear furnace burning up hydrogen. In fact, if you knew the total amount of sunlight that fell upon the Earth, you could even estimate how fast the sun was burning up its nuclear fuel. You could even calculate when the sun would die. But that was just a theory. Until the 1st of November, 1952. On an island in the Pacific, the most powerful bomb in human history was being tested. For the first time, by fusing hydrogen atoms, scientists were duplicating the very process that drives the sun's furnace. In some sense, those hydrogen bombs were like a piece of the sun placed on the Earth. They confirmed the theory. We now knew with certainty when the sun would die. The sun is a middle-aged star. It's consumed about half its nuclear fuel, and it will die in five billion years. That's a certainty. That's a law of physics. We've seen the birth of Earth time 4.6 billion years ago, and now we know the end in another 5 billion years. The Earth is halfway through its life. We have at last found our place in time. Just a tiny moment in our planet's great story, a transient fragment doomed to pass. But maybe, just maybe, we can escape. When I was a kid, I used to read a lot of science fiction because it would take me to a world of fantasy and adventure. But in my own lifetime, I've seen many of these fantasies become reality. We've seen the beginning of space travel, genetic manipulation, the computer revolution, and artificial intelligence. So I believe that the human creative spirit is truly limitless. And I believe that perhaps our technology may insulate us from extinction, elevate our human culture to heights that we've never seen before, and allow us to enter a new epoch of time in which we can continue our remarkable journey. In my next slice of time, I'm going to be exploring the furthest reaches of the universe to ask, will time itself ever have an end? 